How do you want to do it? Um, you should just you will say a few things first. The opening tomorrow. Karuna, you're done with your instructions? Karuna? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being on hold. I would now like to hand the conference over to Ms. Alpana Kirlavala. Thank you, and over to you, ma'am. Um, thank you very much, Karuna. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this post policy conference. Um, Governor will make a few remarks to begin with and then question answers. Governor? Thank you, Alpana. Uh, since our last review, the bulk of our conditions for cutting interest rates have been met. The January 2016 target of 6% inflation is likely to be achieved. Therefore, the focus should now shift to bringing inflation to around 5% by the end of fiscal 2016-17. With weakening global activity since our last review, commodity prices will remain contained for a while. With low industrial capacity utilization, more domestic demand is needed to substitute for weakening global demand so that the domestic investment cycle picks up. The coming pay commission report could add substantial fiscal stimulus to domestic demand, but the government has reaffirmed its desire to respect its fiscal targets and improve the quality of its spending. Under these circumstances, the Reserve Bank intends to be accommodative to the extent possible, given its inflation goals, while recognizing that continuing government policy implementation, structural reforms, and corporate actions leading to higher productivity will be the primary impetus for sustainable growth. Now, we do believe that investment as well as durable goods purchases, are likely to respond more strongly if there's more certainty about the extent of monetary stimulus in the pipeline, even if transmission is slow. Therefore, the Reserve Bank has front-loaded policy action by a reduction in the policy rate by 50 basis points. Given our year-ahead projections of inflation, this ensures that one year expected Treasury bill real interest rates of about 1.5 to 2 percent, which we think is appropriate for this stage of the recovery. While the Reserve Bank's stance will continue to be accommodative, the focus of monetary action for the near term will shift to working with the government to ensure that impediments to banks passing on the bulk of the cumulative 125 basis points cut in the policy rate are removed. This includes, amongst other things, reviewing small savings rates. The Reserve Bank will continue to be vigilant for signs that monetary policy adjustments are needed to keep the economy on the target disinflationary path. Now, we've laid out a number of other policies today. We have a medium-term framework for foreign portfolio investment in government bonds with a target of allowing FPI ownership of up to 5% by March 2018. We'll also open FPI investment in state government bonds with a target of 2% by March 2018. Now, altogether, this implies incremental space of about 25 to $30 billion of the next two and a half years, of which $5 billion will open up immediately over the next six months. The intent here is to create more room steadily to slant towards long-term investors and to help develop domestic markets. We've also opened to masala bonds. Uh, I think that's the name they're called by. These are rupee bonds, and we intend them to have a minimum maturity of five years. They can be issued abroad, or they will be issued abroad. For the moment, they will come under the overall corporate FPI limit. We will bring down the ceiling on SLR securities held under uh, HTM from 22% to 21.5% with effect uh, from the fortnight beginning January 9, 2016. Thereafter, the SLR and HTM ceiling will be brought down by 0.25% every quarter till March 31st, 2017. I should say 0.25% points. Now, we've in announced increased participation by a variety of players in various markets in our ongoing efforts to improve participation and market depth. 
We will increase the limit for resident entities for hedging their foreign exchange exposures in the OTC market from US dollars 250,000 to US dollars 1 million without the production of any underlying documents subject to the submission of a simple declaration. We're also going to examine the possibility of participation by financially sophisticated investors up to certain limits in currency markets without underlying exposure. Let me conclude these opening remarks. The global environment is looking weak for a variety of reasons. Undoubtedly, this is not good news for India because no country is an island. But there is opportunity in even the worst news. We can stand out as a country which still promises strong, sustainable growth. The possibility of realizing this opportunity should encourage us to redouble our efforts to implement our past announcements and to undertake new reforms. The economy has legacy problems to deal with and there are no silver bullets, as I have said repeatedly. The government, other regulators and the RBI are, are turning around this economy through hard work, through pragmatic policies that are not ideological but based on what works. At the same time, if we are to avoid the mistakes of the past, policy goals have to be steady and predictable so that everyone knows where we are going and can make long-term investments accordingly. I hope these remarks help you understand the policies we have announced today. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Shobna, please uh, announce your name in the mic with the organization and then ask your question. Shobna Subramanian Financial Express. So thank you for the Diwali gift. But, uh, you know, how much do you think, you know, you yourself say even as if transmission is slow, you expect the stimulus to drive the investment. So how much transmission are you looking at? What do you think would be reasonable, say, in the next six months or seven months? We're going to be working very hard with the government on this. So uh, the intent here is to, is to not sort of point fingers at other people, but to start moving quickly on ensuring that transmission does take place. Of course, there are limits to how fast it can, it can happen. But we believe that some will take place very soon and more will take place over time. We want to create the conditions, some of which will include things like the uh, changes in the calculation of the base rate, some of which will include government actions such as reviewing the small savings interest schemes. But uh, the intent is to work together to move forward uh, so that transmission takes place. Now, I, I must say here that tr some transmission is already taking place through markets. Uh, the short-term money markets have come down, the long-term bond markets have come, uh, yields have come down, so that will help. But I think other actions will also be forthcoming in the next few days. Nisha. Thank you. I'm Nisha Podar from ET Now. Governor wanted to understand, you did say that uh, you are going to be accommodative, but then transmission is going to be one focus that you're shifting towards. And taking off from her question, are the future rate cuts really dependent on the transmission? Are there any expected in this calendar year? And how much of a weightage will your decision making have on the Fed rate hike uh, this particular year? Because it has been said that it could be there. And its impact also on the Indian debt market. Right. Um, so start with the last. Uh, we clearly pay attention to what the Fed is doing, uh, as well as other central banks, because it does affect uh, the economy through foreign investment. So we have to pay some attention to it. But I can't say it is the central issue that, that, uh, that we focus on when we discuss monetary policy. It is one of the uh, many concerns that we, uh, we look at. Now, uh, as far as uh, transmission uh, uh, goes, we want to encourage uh, faster transmission, and we'll do what, what is needed. Um, what we need to look at going forward is uh, see that we have greater comfort on the inflation path. Uh, some of it is predicted on uh, positive developments for inflation stemming from the global economy. There are also risks to inflation. Uh, we've pointed them out before. You know what they are, uh, including the uh, weak monsoon and the effects on food prices. So all these are things we will examine as time goes on and then take a view. It, transmission is just one of the factors we will look at. 
Lata? Morning, Governor. Lata from CNBC TV18. Uh, for uh, FI17, you have forecast a growth of 8% in the last quarter and an inflation of 4.8% in the last quarter. Now, uh, that's a bit uh, difficult when you expect growth to pick up by about 60 basis points from the current year and you still expect inflation to fall to 4.8. So what are the bases of that uh, uh, expectation? And uh, okay. also in terms of transmission, you've said you'll work with the government. Is it only on small savings? What else? I mean, in the past, governments have worked by arm twisting banks to uh, <laughs> force them to lower rates. So what did you exactly mean? As well, you've kept liquidity a little uh, better in the past one quarter. Will that be a policy to ensure that rates are transmitted? Um, let me answer your second question first. I mean, transmission, uh, there are various impediments, as, as we said in the policy, uh, including our own regulations, which we have to examine to make sure that banks have the ability to transmit, given regulations on things like the base rate. So uh, what we're going to do is work on a variety of, uh, of dimensions. Uh, one of the things to remember is if we have lags in transmission, they add to the lags also that even when transmitted, monetary policy takes time to work, right? So we have two, two sets of lags, lags from policy announcement to transmission and then from transmission to the policy actually working. And it could take a long time if we aren't more, more active. Now, uh, you should ask the government what it intends to do. I think they're the best people to speak uh, on it. But from our side, we ensure that liquidity is plentifully supplied. We don't want excess. Uh, and the natural state of this economy with slight deficit in liquidity, which we supply. Uh, so the intent is to be there. The intent is to keep rates in the money market close to the policy rate, which is 6.75 uh, going forward. And the uh, intent is to use all liquidity instruments to supply what is, what is needed. So uh, from our side, uh, liquidity, the base rate uh, calculations, those are some of the things we will work on. For some time because of the excess liquidity, but that has reversed uh, post the tax inflows. And we have to manage this process. And we're trying to keep the, the, uh, the weighted average call rate pretty close to the policy rate. Uh, let me ask uh, Dr. Patel to speak a little on uh, the factors. Uh, the output gap is still negative. So I, I don't think that, uh, that this is necessarily uh, uh, a breaking tension between uh, between the projection for uh, output at GVA and inflation. Uh, secondly, as we enter a period of persistently lower inflation, the opposite of what was the case uh, for several years prior to the current disinflationary cycle, uh, the impact of those on uh, inflation itself will, I think, for the first time be felt on the downward side. Uh, secondly, the globe, or thirdly rather, th the global commodity prices are still expected to be soft, uh, and therefore that particular uh, uh, beneficial factor is likely to continue uh, even as we grow uh, somewhat faster. Especially on the food side, so that that is a, uh, a, a something that is uh, that is a source of comfort. Um, let us see. I think we take one policy at a time. Okay. So uh, a lot of the projections, of course, medium term projections, a lot can happen in between. Uh, a year ago, none of you thought we would be even talking about achieving the 6% goal. Uh, today we are clearly within uh, you know, good reach of that. So my sense is these are projections. Let us wait and see how things pan out. And as we have said in the policy, deviations we will adjust to. Anupriya? 
Uh, good morning, uh, Governor Anupra Nair from Bloomberg TV India. Uh, I want to drive that point forward. What uh, what causes disinflation from here on? I'm not using deflation because you made it very categoric in the policy as well that the review and use of the WPI has to be watched very carefully. So what causes disinflation from here on to 4.8% if it's not global commodity because the seep through is minimal in retail prices. So what takes you to 4.8% firstly? And the second question is slightly unrelated uh, to the first one is how much is the worry on power discoms and in your conversations with the government, do power discom and the worry on the financial system come into play? Uh, because a large part in the hindrance in being able to transmit rates is also this large overhang of power and steel exposure on banks. Uh, so please, if you could answer both those questions. Okay, uh, let me start first with the power issue. We, uh, government of course is uh, fu fully cognizant of the problem. Uh, as are we, and we don't intend to kick the can down the road as uh, perhaps uh, has been the unintended consequences of past policies. So we need to take a, a, a very careful uh, decision here to put the uh, power distribution companies back on track with healthy capital structures and absorb the uh, debt that has been created over time in the right place uh, with the right sort of uh, uh, interest rates. So that is the intent of what we're working on uh, with the government, with the states, and uh, hopefully we will get a resolution which will help the power distribution companies look ahead. Obviously, there'll be a lot of contingencies in the, in the um, uh, final resolution that they will have to meet, the states will have to meet, the center will have to meet, as well as actions for the RBI. Um, now, uh, turning to the other question, uh, I'm sorry, do you remember? Uh, yeah, would you like? You know, it, it's an extension from the previous question, uh, emphasizing two more factors. One is that the capacity utilization continues to be, uh, uh, continues to be low at around 70, 72 percent. And so that gives us confidence that, uh, that there is adequate slack to have higher growth and lower inflation. The other factor that is assumed uh, is that the government's programmed fiscal deficit reduction over the medium term uh, this year, next year, and the year after is on track. Uh, so that is also an important assumption uh, on the inflation front. Thank you. I, I think the biggest risks to inflation which we are watching is on the services side. Uh, where capacity, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to determine what capacity is in the service side, and uh, inflation in uh, areas like healthcare, education have been high uh, over the past few years. Now, there's some signs of it coming down, but that is the place we have to be very watchful. Of course, in addition to the consequences of the of the monsoon and whether they are contained, but uh, food management can help a lot in keeping food prices low. Uh, where we need more capacity creation is in areas of services where we are possibly running into bottlenecks related to human capital, availability of teachers, availability of doctors, and so on. Amul? Uh, hi, sir. Amul from Z Business. You partly answered the question about transmission, but if you allow me to ask, out of 75 basis points, bank have reduced to 30, 30 basis points. Abhi, out of 125 basis points, how much do you think bank has scope to reduce? Or because bank have always given the arguments of cost of funds, deposit rates, do you think that we still have to listen to that argument or bank have more scope to uh, reduce the rates now? When we look at the numbers, we find that the uh, reduction on deposit rates has been quite substantial already. Uh, and therefore, uh, if you aren't passing it on through lower transmission, uh, into lending rates, that means it's accumulating at the bank. Now, some accumulation will happen because the maturity of the deposits is different from uh, how this translates into lending uh, quickly. But I think over time, they should be able to pass through everything. The question is, how much time will that take and whether there are measures that are preventing them from doing it, either that we have put in place or the government has put in place, and we are both determined to make changes if if uh, on those ones. Nilashri. Governor Nilashri from Business Standard. You have said that the limit for FPI investment in debt securities will henceforth be announced fixed in rupee terms. 
So what will be the rupee value which will be taken into account for this? Um, sir, would you like to what do you mean the rupee value? How it will be calculated, rupee terms, because it is we rupee have outstanding, uh, We have outstanding in rupee terms. And governor has said that our target is 5% at the end of March 2018. So it's simple. There is no question of exchange rate coming into picture. So it will be outstanding value which will be taken yeah, into account. outstanding value which is in rupee and the 5% is in rupees. So um, you can then extrapolate from where we are to where we are going and approximately that pace we will uh, open up. Uh, the limits will be announced every six months, the additional limits. And uh, over the next six months, it's about five billion uh, spread across. At, at current rate. Uh, at current rate, sorry, going back to dollars. But about uh, um, uh, spread across SD, uh, SDLs and, and government securities. So about 27, how much? 26,000 crores and, uh, and. Over the next two and a half years, 25 billion. Over the next six months. Six months. Over the entire period. I know, but, but over the next six months, about 26,000 crores yeah. for for government securities and another 7,000 crores. Uh, some, you can see the numbers, 6,000 6, crores for SDLs. Um, this side, Govardhan. Govardhan from the Economic Times. So you had mentioned in the past that uh, the real interest rate should be somewhere around 150 to 200 basis points. That is uh, for the repo. Now if you look at the inflation projection and the repo rate, it is actually less than 100 basis points. Does that mean that the concept of the positive real interest rate 150 to 200 basis points is no more valid? And uh, what is the reason for 50 basis points based on your past guidance, the monetary policy framework that everyone forecasts only 25? What made you go for a 50? Yeah. Um, so first on the real interest rate, uh, uh, you know, over time we've sort of refined that to be a one-year look ahead. Uh, usually one-year treasuries uh, are about 25 basis points over the policy rate. So the one-year look-ahead treasury would be about 7, right, given policy rate of 6.75. So 7, and we are saying it would be 150 to 200, which means we inflation would be between 5% and 5.5% one year from now. That's approximately where our projections suggest they will, it will be. So between 5 and 5.5% inflation in uh, one year from now, and that's, that's why we have this. Uh, um. Now, um, uh, the second question is, what made us do 50? I think the policy is very clear that since our last policy statement, uh, the conditions that we had laid out for further accommodation broadly met, except perhaps monsoon. We haven't seen a good monsoon. But at the same time, we haven't seen food prices, except in, in uh, vegetables and pulses, go up. And there's some sense that government is working to bring some of those those down. Uh, but we've also seen a dramatic reduction in the external environment, uh, including the news on China, which has had a tremendous effect on commodity prices, uh, including on oil, and prospects for these commodity prices going forward. Uh, so if you see around the world, there is a general sense that global activity is actually going to be further downgraded from what we thought in August. So that gave us a sense that uh, we probably could look for a little more room, given that that would also impinge on domestic demand. And as Dr. Patel said, the capacity utilization, which really is the first factor which leads to more investment, is still very tepid. And that would suggest there's room for more domestic demand, which will be non-inflationary. And then that will eventually create more investment. Ultimately, we also need investment to create the supply which holds longer term inflation in check. So we need to restart investment. Investment, corporate investment has been weak. Uh, and investment intentions, which is a sign of look ahead what corporations want, has not picked up yet. So these are factors which suggested that we could use the maximum room that uh, inflation forecast gave, which took us to the 50 basis point. So can this also be read as something that you for yeah, even if the Fed goes ahead and raises rates, that you don't see much of a turmoil in the financial markets? No, I, I will never predict what financial markets do. I think we should be prepared for anything the financial markets do. But repeatedly I have said our best protection against financial market turmoil uh, and surviving financial market turmoil is good policies. 
And good policies that result in sustainable growth ultimately are what will sort of protect us from what is happening in the rest of the world. Now, um, again, uh, we want to make sure that the word sustainable and growth go together. Both are important. And that's why you know, we used what lim uh, room we had, but I don't think we were excessively aggressive. Uh, we, weren't, uh, we weren't sort of throwing out a Diwali bone. I think this is more, uh, I shouldn't say bone with Diwali, the Diwali present. <laughs> uh, but really this was about, given the state of the economy, how can we move it forward? Pradeep. Pradeep Pandya, CNBC Awaaz or CNBC Bajar se. First of all, you have analyzed a lot that the bank's deposit rates are not going to be able to transmit it. Do you have to think about it too? Do you have to think about it too? If the average cost and marginal cost are shifted to the average cost, then how many places will it become? Because HDFC Bank has cut in the situation, they have said that 35 basis points are coming from the formula. Is this going to be the right for the whole sector? Or is this going to be your estimate? और दूसरा सवाल सर अभी तक सारे बाजार 6 परसेंट के सीपीआई को काफी करीब से देखते थे आज की पॉलिसी के बाद क्या हम ये कह सकते हैं कि अब 5 परसेंट वो नंबर है जो देखना चाहिए आपका गोल एक साल आगे का शिफ्ट हो चुका है हाउ मच रूम फॉर रिडक्शन बेस्ड ऑन रिडक्शन इन दी टारगेट रेट बेस्ड ऑन मार्जिनल कॉस्ट दैट because different banks have different marginal costs, that's what we have been trying to uh, suggest to them, that they have to work out and come out with their own policies and accordingly bring down their base rate. So it will be very difficult for us to determine upfront how much is a likely reduction. That's right, it will be very difficult because it depends upon each particular bank's position, their own uh, uh, deposit structure, uh, various uh, term structure in which they have uh, acquired the liabilities, and uh, accordingly, they will have to be very, very repricing. So it is very difficult to determine it. Um, we have said that we aim to get inflation down to 5% by uh, uh, the end of fiscal 2016-17. That is by March. This was the announcement. Uh, we had announced 4% by end of fiscal 2017-18 in a April policy of this year. So we are refining that by saying the interim target would be 5 by 2016-17 uh, uh, end, okay? That means about one and a half years uh, to disinflate a little more. Now remember the average for this year is approximately 5%, 5 point uh, that we've had inflation. So uh, of course we have benefited from some tail, uh, some good e ex external factors, but we've also had a very difficult monsoon. So we have to do a little more to get us to the 5% over the next year. Uh, we think it is feasible. Uh, we think it is feasible. After all, we came down one, uh, we came down two percentage points over the last year. Uh, going further down becomes more and more difficult over time. But we think five is eminently feasible given where we are. Now, one and a half years is a long time. Let us see. Should it be read as a hawkish statement followed by a <laughs> dovish policy? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what you want to call me. Santa Claus is what uh, uh, Lata called me earlier. Uh, you want to call me a hawk? I don't know. I, I don't go by these, these things. My name is Raghuram Rajana and I do what I do. <laughs> uh, Karuna, can you please check if there are questions there? Sharma, participants on the audio bridge, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star and one on your touch tone telephone. We have first question from the line of Mayur Shetty from Times of India. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, Governor. This is Mayur Shetty from Times of India. Uh, my question is on the asset quality of banks. Uh, uh, recently, you had unveiled a new set of measures to address stressed assets, giving banks more flexibility to change management and more cloud to the joint lenders forum. Uh, my question is whether were these measures prompted by a deterioration in the asset quality situation? Well, uh, let me uh, answer very quickly and then turn it over to Mr. Mundra. The uh, answer is no. Uh, it was examining our existing policies and making sure they're working. And of course, uh, policy, uh, ha policies have to be adjusted continuously to make sure that what you intended is what is actually happening 
And that was uh, primarily some of the reasons for change. But let me ask Mr. Mundra to comment more. No, exactly the same. And uh, uh, you know, any any policy measures cannot be decoupled from the developments in the real economy. So uh, the idea is, if there are developments, and I think we have been always been maintaining that the whole policy focus is that if there is a genuine problem in the sector, the policy measures should be proactive to sort out those problems. And but the policy measures should also be used in the right spirit. So there should not be, as Governor has been mentioning earlier, no pretending and extending. So I think this whole, uh, this is a part of supervisory process as it should be done. Um, last two questions from the room, sir. Um, Sandrine and Gabriel. <coughs> Hello, Sandrine Rastello with Bloomberg. You mentioned you want some degree of predi predictability uh, yet, you, as you probably know, almost nobody expected uh, 50 basis point today. Going forward, actually, most economists expected a prolonged pause. Now, reading your paragraph 16, has that changed? Because you still have the accommodative stance, yet you have, you, you have some conditions. So should we expect some sort of a, of a pause? And to, just a quick question, since commodity prices have tumbled, we've seen a big problem on the debt market developing with Glencore. Is that something as a central bank that you're monitoring for potential uh, systemic risk for India? Um, so um, note very carefully, we said predictability about goals. Of course, if we can also uh, introduce predictability about what we do every time, that would be a, a good thing. Uh, I think most people expected a rate cut. Nobody expected a pause. That was good. Now, the extent of the rate cut, to some extent, we were influenced by international developments since last time, which suggested a much weaker external environment. If you look at our exports, uh, for the first time, volumes also were a little weaker uh, this time around, all of which suggests that uh, you know, we have to live in turbulent waters f uh, for a little while longer. Um, so that was why the policy was a little different from what, uh, uh, what, uh, what people expected. Um, going forward, I mean, again, we will try and ensure uh, that people understand what we are trying to do. And we make judgments on what we need to do to get there based on all the data before us, as well as some of the uh, actions we can take. Uh, uh, so I, I think uh, I can't tell you exactly what policy will be every time, but I hope to give you a sense of, of what it might be, as well as uh, once we do it, give you an understanding of why we did it, which is reasonable. Uh, Kansam, on the debt markets and the... No, no, what exactly your question on the commodity price or debt market? Glencore and uh, the uh, commodity... Pardon? Um, uh, on, on Glencore itself, uh, I, I don't think Kansab heard the question. Uh, on Glencore itself, I doubt that there is a significant risk stemming from them. Uh, of course, which way will it go? Uh, typically, with large commodity traders uh, having difficulties, um, I would guess the primary factor would be to uh, depress commodity prices even more. One could argue the other way that given that uh, they are intermediaries in the process, it could elevate some commodity prices. Nevertheless, I think it's one company amongst many companies that do similar activities. And uh, the fact that they're in distress doesn't mean they stop functioning. So uh, I, I don't think uh, we worry too much about the effects of Glencore. I'll, I'll just add what Governor is mentioning. Uh, I think if you do some uh, analysis of uh, the particular instances which you have mentioned, it is uh, more stemming from their ownership of the commodity assets uh, rather than the trading activities per se. So I think that should be uh, taken into account. Last question, Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel Parvassini from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Governor, uh, you mentioned in passing in your remarks um, the uh, role played by the um, Fed decision not to hike rates uh, is one of the elements that uh, push it to decide um, to go ahead and cut rates this time. Uh, 
Uh, could you tell us a bit more about that? And could you also tell us, uh, going forward, how you uh, see the Fed decision uh, playing out uh, on global markets and how that is going to influence India? Um, Thank you. You know, um, I, I think last time we had said that this was one source of uncertainty which we'd know more about. And uh, of course, what happened was uh, it continues to remain a source of uncertainty, uh, but at least it wasn't realized uh, over this period. Now, different uh, central bankers have views on, different views on this. Some would have liked to get it behind us. Others say, okay, you've bought us some time. And it depends to some extent on the degree of preparation uh, as well as the turmoil their markets are undergoing. Um, you know, it's hard to say. I think the uh, markets uh, uh, have taken the Fed decision uh, a little adversely also, that some of them are worried about what this means for what the Fed knows about global activity. Uh, so uh, it's not clear that there is any, uh, you know, policy that, uh, that, that would be um, uh, without problems for the Fed. Uh, they would always get blamed for something or the other. Uh, going forward, uh, I, I think a number of Fed uh, um, decision makers have said that uh, they would like to do it this year, 2015, which presumably means around December. But clearly, uh, I think the single uh, takeaway from what the Fed has been doing so far is its policy is very contingent on the environment when the policy makers meet. And we don't know what that environment will be like in December. So from our perspective, we're just continuing to try and make this economy more robust and ensuring uh, strong, sustainable growth. Uh, I think that's what we can do in these, this environment. We don't uh, sort of agonize every day about the, what the Fed is going to do. So thanks very much, all of you, sir. And uh, thank you very much, Karuna, on the audio bridge. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the thing to do today's conference call. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to now listen and check this. You want to do one picture here? Yeah, yeah. You've got the. Oh, the ah, team. let's yeah. get the. Team picture. Uh, in front or? No, 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 no. Come, come. Sorry. Got enough light?